Welcome to Cleaning Business TV. I'm David Luke, CEO of Two Maids and a Mop, and with me as always... I'm Ron Holt, CEO and founder of Two Maids and a Mop. David, um, anything new since last week? Anything you want to talk about? Any changes in your life? Uh, I had a birthday. I'm Happy year, birthday. Yeah, I'm one year older. Oh, so that's so sweet. I feel uh, a lot different, too. You do. You look different. Mm. look happy. Mm. A little bit older, but happy. Definitely. I have braces. That's yeah. changes, yeah. Yeah, okay. you didn't have What do you think, guys? 40-year-old braces? <laughs> Is that doable? I could pull that off. They wouldn't have noticed. <laughs> well, they pointed that out. But, you know, what else are we going to talk about? Cleaning? Well, yes, we are going to be talking <laughs> about cleaning. Specifically, we're going to be talking about how to deal with breakage and damage inside a customer's home today. Mm-hmm. And this is exciting. It is, especially when it happens. Sure. Man, well, I've lived it, too. It's uh, if For those of you out there who have your own cleaning business, you, you can feel the feeling I've had and David has had when you get that call of something going wrong inside someone's home. Uh, it's it's just like your your heart sinks and your stomach knots up. Uh, how big is it? You know, what what's going to happen? Uh, what do I what do we do? And uh, not to make light of it because someone's property is damaged, but it's it's uh, somewhat relieving when you hear that it's something small, but it's you know, it's still just as big of an issue if it's something large. You know, and we've had everything in from small to big over the years. So we're going to talk to you about things that we've learned over the 11 years of us doing business uh, in this industry and things that hopefully you can do on your end. Um, first up, no doubt about it, don't wait till it happens. Work hard to prevent those accidents from mm-hmm. occurring inside a customer's home. Uh, we call it prevention. And uh, in, our, in our world, we sort of phase it into two different stages. Uh, one is insurance. You, you need to have some type of insurance to protect you in case things do go wrong, in case you break something inside someone's and, home. And most of your customers are going to ask that. If you're in the cleaning business, they're going to ask these two, are you insured and are you bonded? That, that's a question we always get. Side note, the funny thing is I've been asked that question. You've probably been asked that question. All of our managers and franchisees have been asked that question thousands of times, and I've, maybe hundreds of thousands of times. Never once has someone said, prove it. Hmm. So what does that tell you? If you're a cleaning person out there who owns your own cleaning business and you hear that question, what's your answer going to be? Has anyone ever said no? (laughs) So it's funny that every customer asks this question, Mm -hmm. um, but the the truth is very few people actually say no. So, uh, and then even the ones that say yes, people don't really dig deep to figure out what that means. So anyway, start for the sidebar. (laughs) Back to insurance. What types of insurance do you need? All sorts of different types of insurance, and they can somewhat they can sometimes be very confusing. The one that deals with actual breakage or damage inside or even outside a customer home is called general liability insurance. Hopefully, it's at the screen right now. David, talk to us a little bit about what general liability insurance means. Well, general liability insurance is in the event of a breakage or damage inside the home, it covers uh, the company. That's right. Well, yeah, okay. that's what it does. Uh, it's different from a bond. Uh, it's different from other types of insurance. This specifically deals with incidents that happen inside the customer's home. Or even outside. It can even be outside? outside? Yes, sir. If it's on the property, because we've, we've lived this. I'll tell you a funny story that I may have told before, but it's so funny I need to say it again. We actually were backing out. of We were, we were in, in Tennessee, in the mountains of Tennessee, so it was very hilly. We were kind of coming down a driveway. And it was also very icy that particular day. It was cold. It gets cold in the south. Um, and the ice uh, forced our tires uh, to sort of move in a, the wrong direction. And we actually plowed into someone's beautiful brick mailbox and, uh, and really hurt the car, damaged the car, and, of course, the mailbox. So uh, that was outside the home, but our general liability insurance actually uh, reimbursed the client for that damage. So th- that's an, a great example. It's a funny example now that we can now that it's over. Yeah, and the client loves us, by the way, uh, from that from that day forward. Nice. So general liability, um, David was kind of talking about it. I interrupted him a little bit. Um, I like to talk a lot, so uh, I'll kind of just keep going. But the really purpose of general liability is to pay out if there is damage. Now, what's going to happen is very similar to your own auto insurance or your homeowner's policy if you've ever used that. The first thing you're going to do is call and make a claim. And say, hey, we were inside so-and-so's home and uh, whatever happened and this is what the deal. So they're going to do the same thing these guys are doing in the auto or homeowner world. They're going to send out an adjuster. I don't know if they actually call them adjusters, but they're going to do some investigation or inspection. And they're going to talk to you, talk to the client, talk to your employee, and really determine, number one, if this actually happened. If you know anything about insurance, you know that they're going to really work hard 
to not pay. pay. So the number one rule of an insurance adjuster <laughs> is not to pay. Right. That's right. So just understand that's part of the process. Um, in terms of time, you know, you're looking at several weeks more than likely. So just make sure you communicate with with the, with the client. And then, um, and then as far as what type of insurance do you need, it's really based on what you can afford um, and also what your com- customers demand of you. We actually have a $2 million policy. That's not necessarily for everybody. We need a $2 million policy because we cover uh, a large amount of territory. Um, usually the minimum is uh, $250,000. The average is probably close to $500,000 to maybe even a million. Um, but again, that's something you need to look internally and determine what you can afford um, and then also, um, if the customers are requiring more than that, um, in other words, if their homes traditionally or, or not traditionally, but on average are worth more than that, you need to make sure that if something really drastically goes wrong inside of a home, let's say a fire, I'm hoping this is real wood, um, that your general liability insurance can actually pay for that. Uh, never want an, You never want a bad accident to actually ruin or damage uh, or destroy your business. And GL policies are designed to protect your business. So make sure you have proper protection, number one. That's called general liability insurance. Number two, what else can you do to prevent these accidents from occurring in a home? Education. Education uh, is not something you can just do one time during the initial training. It's something you've got to do on an ongoing basis to make sure that all of your employees understand uh, that, you know, yes, mistakes are a part of what we do, but there are certain things you can do inside of a home, inside of a car to protect yourself from all sorts of different bad things from happening. What do we do for education? Well, one thing we do for education is we teach the right way to clean. There are wrong ways to clean. There are, for instance, a picture frame. Uh, You're dusting a picture frame and you're doing it with just one hand, not guiding it with another hand. Um, We do things from making sure every one of our employees wears an apron so that their utensils and everything they need is on them so that they can have both their hands free. That's a big thing with us. It doesn't seem like it would... Uh, it seem, doesn't seem like it would matter that much, but it's huge for us because it keeps everything with them. It keeps our uh, every utensil they need right there so that they can keep their hands on whatever they're dealing with, whatever table, whatever wall, whatever picture they're dealing with. And that's something we teach so that we avoid this breakage. And it's an ongoing process with, with us. Uh, we do that once every two weeks. We're going to educate on things as far as driving habits, as far as cleaning habits, and our cleaning technique that we use for two maids and a mop. And it is specifically to prevent accidents from happening inside or outside the home. You, you know, I'm a, I'm a big reader. And uh, I, I read a book years ago uh, about the UP, UPS, the delivery company. And uh, believe it or not, one of the things they do before they hire or after they hire a, a driver is once a year, once not only not during just training, but once a year, these drivers have to do one thing over and over for one consecutive hour. Any idea what that is? Safety training. Close. That's right on. I've told you this story before. Um, so you, the, the drivers actually are required to enter the truck, turn on the truck, turn off the truck, and get out of the truck. That's it. Because the number one cause of accidents for these UPS drivers over the years has been getting out of their truck because there's no door. So there, all sorts of different things happen from crazy, hmm. tragic accidents to smaller accidents. I don't remember this story. Well, it's such a great story. You should have remembered it. You guys better remember it. So uh, anyway, that's that's a, the, the, the story behind that or the reason for that is it's that repetitive task can become so, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, redundant. Redundant, you know, that you don't have to think about it. Um, so they forced each of their drivers to do that. Uh, I guess they still do that. This was seven or eight years ago when I read it. But they forced their drivers to do that once a year for an hour. Can you imagine how boring it, it gets over and over and over and over again? They also don't make left-hand turns. They don't. They don't. They can go on and on. Yeah. Yeah. Safety. Safety. So now that we've talked about prevention, we want to go to the bad part after it happens. It's not necessarily the bad part. Well, it may not be, but it it can be, uh, especially if you're the owner and you're just wondering how bad can it be. Um, But, you know, it is part of what we do. Um, the, The larger you get as a cleaning business, the more opportunity for things to go wrong. Um, and this would be one of those things that can go wrong, breakage or damage inside of a customer's home. So what happens after that accident occurs? What are you doing? What are we doing, David, to, to uh, handle this situation properly? The first, th- the first thing we're going to do is listen. Uh, we're going to listen to the customer because you, you don't know. I mean, you don't know if it's something that has sentimental value. It could be a $12 watch that um, 
that we broke and but it has sentimental value L- being attentive listening to every single detail taking notes on uh, on whatever it was that was broken or damaged but listening that is the first rule of customer service whether it's an irate customer to anything and in this case as listening is the first thing you must do the next thing is basically acting once you've got all the information from the customer what what has been damaged what has been broken then you've got action steps to take um, you've got to reach out to um, the insurance company you have, the GL policy, as we've talked about already. You've got to talk to them and uh, find out the steps you need to go through to make that claim and have the adjuster come out uh, to, to look at it. And then also, when those two steps are taken, guess what? You still have to communicate with a customer. You have to let them know where you are in the process. You can't just say, thank you so much for all those details. Great. Bye. You have to stay in constant communication with them, let them know where you are, let them know where the process is, because whatever has happened inside their home, they want you to know that you care about them, that you're attentive to their needs, that you're attentive to whatever you've damaged, and that you're going to make it right. So communication is huge. Yeah, if you're you're doing all the things you need to do to fix this situation or rectify this situation and and even refund this customer all the money that that they've lost because of this damage... That's great, but if you're not communicating those steps with the client, right. you, you you've lost you've already lost the battle. That's right. So communication is is essential if you want to make sure this bad situation can turn into a, a good situation. Because you we have have instances. I just talked about that brick mailbox customer. She still uses us today and loves us. Um, we could have it could have went really south on That's us, right. um, but it actually turned into a good thing for us, and uh, we have a great customer who loves us and tells other people about the situation more than likely. Just like he's saying, it's not that it's not that customers don't expect stuff to happen. Stuff is going to happen. Bad stuff could happen with any kind of service industry. It is how you deal with it as a company. It's how you deal with it as a cleaning business that the customer is going to say, you know what, they dealt with this difficult situation. They dealt with it properly and professionally. You know what, I'm going to stay a customer with that company because I know how they treat me in difficult situations. So that's huge. So hopefully you've learned a little bit today about how to deal with something that could be what consists, you know, we're, we hate to use the word bad, but it could be a bad situation. If breakage or damage occurs, just deal with it in a professional way and typically good things will occur down the road from it. Prevent, then respond. So uh, thanks for joining us again today, and uh, we'll see you next week. See ya.